Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on all your favorite social media platforms. The Disney theme parks usually evoke these fun, bright, and happy images. But the happiest place on Earth has a dark side, from spooky urban legends to creepy details. Do you know about the tragic accident that almost ruined the Haunted Mansion? What about that eerie abandoned attraction at Walt Disney World? Is Mickey's Toontown really home to one of the most haunted locations at Disneyland? And does a ghostly spirit really loom through the elevator shafts in the Hollywood Tower Hotel? Well, it's time to get a little spooky as we count down the top 7 Disney myths, urban legends, and creepy secrets. Number 7 Did you know that more than 10% of Americans fear the number 13? It's usually considered a pretty unlucky number. A lot of buildings don't even have a 13th floor. But when it comes to the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, the number 13 is everywhere you turn. It fits the uneasy tone of the ride. But the first sight of 13 you may encounter actually brings some good luck. Seeing a 13-minute wait might make you feel uneasy, but this means the ride has no wait at all. Then once you enter the abandoned lobby, you'll find a concierge desk on the right-hand side. Beside the desk, there's a triple-A plaque that was awarded to the Hollywood Tower Hotel. They gave the hotel 13 diamonds, but the highest diamond rating AAA actually gives out is only 5, so something fishy is definitely going on. Then once you board your elevator, you're taken up to the 13th floor, dropped 13 stories, and when the ride's over, the elevator doors open to reveal a B that turns into the number 13. No matter where you go, there is no escaping the number 13 on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. So if you are a bit superstitious, you may want to give this ride a second thought. Number 6 In front of the Haunted Mansion at both Walt Disney World and Disneyland, you can find a horse-drawn hearse. They were added to the attractions in the mid-1990s, and they really set the tone with that phantom horse leading the way. Now, the hearse in Florida matches the gothic exterior of the mansion, and if you ever wondered if it was actually used for a real funeral service, well, it could have been, but this was actually a real movie prop. It made several appearances in the 1965 film The Sons of Katie Elder. Now, over the years, Disney has restored and modified the hearse, but it's definitely one of the oldest props at Walt Disney World. Now, over at Disneyland in California, this is an authentic 19th century hearse, but as soon as it was installed in 1995, it became the subject of a popular urban legend. It's said the white hearse is connected to the Mormon church and was used for Brigham Young's funeral in 1877. Brigham Young was the second president of the Mormon Church. Now, although white horse-drawn hearses were common around this time in Utah and within the church, this urban legend turns out to be false. Back in 1990, Disney purchased the hearse off a collector in Malibu named Dale Rickards. He owned a Hollywood prop business and was actually the one who started this rumor. There was only one Brigham Young and he died. There was only one hearse at Verity. So Dale Rickards purchased the hearse back in 1972 from a collector in Las Vegas. This collector claimed he had a letter from the Young family saying they kept the hearse after Brigham Young's funeral. Now, the original letter was not given to Rickards during the initial purchase. When he went back to Las Vegas a couple months later to obtain the letter, he learned that the collector had been beaten and robbed. And guess what? They stole the letter. Go figure, right? With the manufacturer plates also removed from the hearse, there was no way to verify its origin. But Dale Rickards still believed this rumor to be true. It was even part of a write-up in the January 1996 edition of the Disneyland Line cast member magazine. Since then, the Mormon church has spoken on this legend, and historical evidence from the church shows that no hearse was used for the funeral ceremony. 
So this whole story just remains as an urban legend, but that's not to say this hearse wasn't used for someone else's funeral. It was a true authentic 19th century piece after all. Number 5 Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at Disneyland is an original opening day attraction from 1955. The ride is pretty fast-paced, but beyond the plywood sets is probably one of the darkest Disney attractions. You never really think of this as a quote-unquote spooky ride, but there is part of the story that goes unnoticed by many. So once you board the car, each guest assumes the role of Mr. Toad. Now in the film, Toad is overcome with motor mania. He turns out to be reckless and ends up getting arrested for stealing a car. On the ride, the judge says, Then this happens. Yeah, there was a little explosion, but do you know what just happened? Well, because of Toad's reckless driving, he ends up getting hit by a train and then dies. Then we find ourselves in hell. Toad was so irresponsible with his motor mania that it led him to the dark side. Getting hit by the train and going to hell was not part of the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad film, so artistic liberties were definitely taken here with the ride. The tone of everything back in the 1950s was much darker than things are today. As a kid, you never really piece together what's really going on. But then as you get older, you realize why it's called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Pretty creepy stuff. Number 4 Nothing is creepier than abandoned places, especially abandoned places at Walt Disney World. Across from the Fort Wilderness Resort area, there is an abandoned nature reserve hidden in plain sight. It's an island in the middle of Bay Lake, transformed into a beautiful zoological garden. Discovery Island is a recreation of a tropical rainforest. Discovery Island originally opened as Treasure Island in April of 1974. Then in 1977, it received the name change. The island was home to a variety of animal exhibits, representing 130 different species, with most of them being birds. At the time, Discovery Island featured one of the largest walkthrough aviaries in the world. Now, once Disney's Animal Kingdom opened in April of 1998, attendance at Discovery Island began to dwindle, so Disney decided to shut the island down. April 8, 1999 marked its last operating day. Over the course of a few months, all the animals found new homes. This included nearby zoos, and many were brought to Disney's Animal Kingdom. What was once an attraction to explore and learn slowly became unrecognizable as the vegetation began to reclaim the land. This is what the island looked like in 2003, just four years after it shut down. You can see the boat dock is still intact, there's that white sandy beach, and a lot of the buildings are still visible. Even in 2011, you can still see the netting from the aviary already collecting all the dead leaves. When Disney closed the island, everything aside from the animals were left behind. All of the buildings were still intact, but after almost 25 years of being abandoned, nature has taken this place over. It's weathered hurricanes and tropical storms, and even some urban exploration. This is police body cam footage from 2020, as they searched for someone who decided to camp out on the island. Now, I have to say, do not attempt to sneak onto Discovery Island. You would be trespassing, and it could be very dangerous. This footage shows the current state of the island, and it's just fascinating yet incredibly eerie to see. I can only imagine what it's like to walk through here, seeing everything that's just been rotting all these years. This here used to be the Discovery Island headquarters and the animal hospital and nursery. It was the largest building on the island, and now it's definitely seen better days. Animal cages that once housed a variety of animals just sit empty through this backstage hallway. Other backstage areas are overgrown with foliage, and who knows what kind of critters and reptiles have moved in. 
And just to add to the whole creepy and eerie tone of the island, these 11 acres are also filled with vultures, so who knows if those will attack. It's wild that thousands of guests pass by the island every day not knowing what's sitting abandoned right in front of them. Number 3 There are many things that go away in the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The abandoned 1930s hotel is so eerie and decrepit, but have you ever noticed this creepy ventriloquist dummy? He could be found at the end of the ride. Well, his name is Caesar, and he can be seen on the left or right hand side depending on which shaft you're in. Now aside from staring into the souls of all the guests, this doll is actually a tribute to an episode of The Twilight Zone called Caesar and Me. Caesar is an evil wooden doll that leads Jonathan West, a successful Irish ventriloquist, into the Twilight Zone. Here on the ride, it looks like he's just ready to say something once you turn your back. Now, Caesar isn't really known to be haunted, but that might not be the case. Through my research, I did come across a couple accounts of cast members mentioning that they had to say good morning to him every day. Come on, say something! I dare you! If they forgot about him and didn't say anything, then he'd have it out to terrorize the guests and cause the ride to break down. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but the Tower of Terror does break down quite a bit. Could Caesar be the one who's responsible? It really makes you wonder what's actually happened in these elevator shafts. Number 2 The ballroom scene is arguably one of the most iconic scenes on the Haunted Mansion. It's actually one of the largest Pepper's Ghost Effect setups in existence. In front of the scene, there are these large panes of glass that extend from top to bottom. They're massive pieces of glass measuring 30 feet in height, and the columns separate each individual piece. Then, animated figures above and below the ride path are illuminated, and their image is reflected onto the glass. It's such a simple yet convincing effect, but the glass is the most important part of the illusion. Now, on Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, have you ever noticed a spider on the glass? It's this little black speck here. The spider is a lot easier to see when the ride is overlaid for Haunted Mansion Holiday. There's a spider. But it's actually covering something that could have ruined this whole illusion. So back in the summer of 1974, the legend has it that someone made it into Disneyland with a BB gun, slingshot, or other firearm, and they ended up puncturing the glass. There are many conflicting stories, but back then, security wasn't what it is today. So getting something like that into the park would have definitely been possible. I find it pretty ironic that it's right in front of the dueling portraits, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone wanted to participate in what the portraits were doing. Now, like I said earlier, this section of glass is one solid pane that measures 30 feet from top to bottom. Aside from the exuberant cost of replacing the entire piece of glass, the only way to get it into the ride would be to cut a hole in the ceiling. All the glass panels were installed using a crane before the show building ceiling was fully sealed. For such a small hole, it was quite a large problem, and the way they ended up fixing it was with a rubber spider. Go figure. Thank goodness though this didn't turn into a huge crack across the entire piece of glass. I mean, unless someone points it out to you, it's hardly noticeable with how much is going on in the scene, but next time you're at Disneyland, see if you can spot it for yourself. Number 1 With Disneyland being as old as it is, it's no surprise that maybe, just maybe, parts of the park are actually haunted. Some Reddit threads contain dozens of accounts from current and former Disneyland cast members who all speak about their experiences with the supernatural. Some of these locations will surprise you, with the first one being the Candy Palace on Main Street. So, the Candy Palace has a basement, and apparently, it's pretty creepy down there. This cast member on Reddit reported things falling off shelves and hearing noises when they were the only ones in the basement. And apparently, this sweet spirit only affects female cast members. I mean, there's a reason why so many horror films take place in basements. 
Now, the Candy Palace isn't the only haunted location on Main Street. The Emporium is also considered to be a hotspot. That same Reddit user said that many cast members have experienced their names being called when no one else was in the room. Just voices in the wind. I don't know, it really sounds like there's some wild paranormal activity on Main Street. Plus, there's the firehouse and Walt's lamp in the window, which we all know that myth. If you don't, you can catch it in a previous video where I discussed some other Disney ghost stories and urban legends. Now, the most surprising haunted location at Disneyland is over in Mickey's Toontown. Like the Candy Palace, Mickey's house also has a basement, which is said to be very, very haunted. This user on Reddit said they've heard creepy voices, seen shadows in mirrors, and again, have witnessed things move when it's only them in the room. Then this other user said they experienced doors opening and closing without anyone coming through them. Apparently, cast members call the spirit Timmy. It just makes you think, what actually happened over in this location? Was it before Mickey's Toontown was built, or could the incident have been something more recent? All I know is that never in all these years of walking through Toontown did I ever think that it would be the most haunted location at Disneyland. So have you ever experienced any supernatural activities at the theme parks? What do you think about some of these stories? I'd love to know! Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.